deep seeks latest model is something that you should definitely not ignore why because this is a model first time test time scaling that means this is a model that is in the family of o1 model which comes with the reasoning thing the best part here is that the reasoning that deep seek does or what they call as deep think is completely transparent unlike open ai o1 preview or o1 mini so in this video, I'm going to break it down for you. What is this new model that is from DeepSeek? And also we're going to do a very brief live demo of how DeepSeek is and how the thinking process is. To start with, we got a new model today, which is from DeepSeek. It's a Chinese company, DeepSeek R1 Light Preview. That's quite a long name for a model, like Light Preview R1 DeepSeek. Okay. Now, unleashing supercharged reasoning power. That almost sounds like a chat GPT written title. I don't know if anybody uh, used chat GPT to write this or itself like deep seek model. Anyways, O1 preview level performance on AI, ME and math benchmarks, transparent thought process in real time, open source models and API coming soon. So the last line is exactly why I decided to make this video because if we are going to get open source models or open weight models, depending upon what the license is going to be. And also we are going to API, then it's very important for us to understand that this model exists. Now, what is this model? This model uh, comes with this chat interface from DeepSeek. I can show you the chat interface here. And it has a very beautiful toggle here and the toggle says deep think. And I've got 48 messages left today because I ran out of two messages while doing a small demo before this video. Now, what this model is trying to do is this model is trying to do something called the reasoning and that is happening at the inference time. And that is what we started calling as test time compute. So during the time of inference, during the time the model is being tested, the compute is being scaled. Okay. So now if you just look at this particular graph, you can see that the R1 light preview, the pass one, I mean that like only one it generates and then you are like getting the response. And then the second one is majority voting. Maybe you are generating like five or six candidate responses and have a majority voting to pick one. And if you see uh, how the track goes here, and at a point here that you would see that this model does pretty good, it scales really well. And if somebody tells you that we are going to hit a wall with training scaling loss, probably this is a graph that you can show it to them to say that, okay, we have got a new hole in the wall for a test time compute scaling. Probably make a separate video altogether explaining what does it mean if you're if it is not very clear for you, what do I mean by scaling loss and test time compute scaling? But for now, this is an excellent report because we have got what something that they call as light, something that they call as preview, just like OpenAI O1. And if the light model is performing this good, what, what about the big model? I mean, I'm not sure if the big model is in works, but it's a very promising thing. And now when I say how the model is performing, the model is performing almost on par with O1 preview which is an open AI model that does chain of thought during the inference time or what we call as test time compute scaling and then gives you the final response. If you have not seen, I'll show you a quick demo of how open AI O1 does things that it is supposed to do. So you've got AI ME and um, DeepSeek is pretty good on math, DeepSeek is pretty good and GPQA, uh, this is what people typically call as the PhD level reasoning. You can see that uh, O1 preview is still better. Uh, in fact, Claude 3.5 Sonnet is better than the DeepSeek R1. This is something that I'm like, honestly, like wondering. Um, one thing that I'm trying to figure out and also I ask a lot of people, talk to a lot of people is that we have got a model like O1 that can do reasoning. What kind of questions this model is particularly good? I mean, of course, we know for sure that this model is not good for just going and asking like, what is the capital of America? I mean, I'm not going to use O1 thinking process, a model does chain of thought to just figure out what is the capital of America. I mean, obviously, like I shouldn't be doing that. But if we are talking about PhD level reasoning, what kind of questions are there? Like we can explore GPQA later on on a different video. But I'm trying to honestly like put together a set of use cases to understand where the reasoning models shine over the regular, like the classical models, like let's say GPT-40, uh, Sonnet and other models. We have got code forces, which is like programming competition and deep seek is doing pretty, pretty good. I mean, if deep seek can get me a job in Fang, I'm, I'm going to be pretty happy. Um, only thing is they have to let me use it. Then you've got life code bench, zebra logic, other programming places where deep seek is doing good. 
or either at least like second to Owen preview. I, I'm honestly like only worried about the GPQA, which is what people typically call as PhD level reasoning. Anyways, uh, the model is pretty good on math, which is where it thinks a lot. The model is very good on coding, which is where it thinks a lot. So I'm going to stop with all this information and I'm going to jump right into the model interface. So this is, this can be accessed at chat.deepseek.com and then you can go here and start chatting. You can chat like literally without deep thinking as well. And you can enable deep thinking and then start chatting. And the second thing is, I'd like to quickly show you the chat GPT's one so that you know, this is from a chat GPT uh, question or chat GPT, what chat GPT launched during the day of uh, their own preview model. So you can see some examples here. There is cipher, there is coding, math, crossword, English. I'm going to use a couple of questions from here, but I'm also skeptical maybe they train the model on this. So take it with a pinch of salt. So first of all, I would like to show you a demo. Okay, I'm going to go to chat GPT, chat.open. And here I can select the model. In this case, I'm going to use Owen preview and I'm going to have Owen preview and deep seek. Okay, I'm going to use this. The very first thing I'm going to do is like the vaguest thing anybody can do on internet. I'm going to go type something here, convert into base 64 encoded format and use that and ask it to decode it. Okay. I love one little coder and he is the best. Uh, just the guy is not famous anymore. Please, <laughs> please get him the silver flake. Yeah, it's, it's a personal crisis coming as a use case. Okay. So I've got the encoded one. So this is a base 64 encoding, one of the most popular encoding format on the internet. So I'm just copying this and I'm going to go back to this one, which is uh, the chat GPT one. Okay. And I'm going to just paste this. Uh, someone sent me this. Uh, I don't know to read this. Please English this. Okay. So same message I'm going to send there. I copied this, sent it deep seek sent it. So let's see what is going to happen. Okay. So what's going on? The user has uh, this string of what looks like gibberish. Of course it looks like gibberish. Thank you. Deep seek. That's pretty much an insult. They mentioned someone sent it to them and they want to read it in English, but they want it uh, translated into English. First, I should figure out what is this? It doesn't look like any language I recognize. Maybe it's encoded or encrypted in a way. Wow. It's like some Sherlock Holmes thing. I recall the, uh, that sometimes text is using encoded and using base 64. So I'll try decoding it with base 64 decoder to see if that makes sense. One thing is like, you can see that it took only five seconds and after decoding, I get it. I love one little coder. It missed one. That's surprising. I mean, that's surprising. He's the best. Hey, just the guy, not in a fabulous way. Please. There is some kind of hallucination happening there. Okay. Uh, I'll be honest. Um, because it got some part correctly, but it did not get everything correctly. So some hallucination is going on. Let's go back to O1 preview. It thought for seven seconds. So it took some time extra. Obviously this is not a light model. It says one little coder. I love one little coder. He's the best. The guy is not famous anymore. Please get him the silver plague. I think the biggest difference here is it did not hallucinate. Good thing, but it does something, uh, but it did not hallucinate. So let's start a new chat. Okay. Um, to be clear. And I'm going to go here and then get one of the question that they gave here. Okay. So the question here is very simple. Uh, this is something that O1 preview does well. I don't think other models do, but what we are going to explore here is a thought process. Okay. I'm going to paste it, send it. And this is once again, a cipher thing. So I'm going to paste it and then send it. And uh, all right, we have got a text here and then it does all these kind of things. It is trying Caesar cipher. Wait a minute. Maybe it's a code based on keyword or something. And it is doing all these kind of things and it is still thinking, still thinking, still thinking and, uh, another idea. So it's going through all these things. Okay. Uh, has, uh, has this, this is still thinking. Okay. So this is also going through this. See, honestly, at this point, I'm also not very sure. Like when deep is saying that this is the raw chain of thought process. I don't know if it, this is exactly how it looks. Um, did it, I'm really stuck here. Maybe I need a break. <laughs> Oh my goodness. This is frustrating. Maybe it's not Caesar cipher at all. <laughs> I'm really stuck here. Maybe I need a break. I need to take a break, come back with a fresh mindset or perhaps ask for a hint or look up or resources on cipher de decryption technique. 
Okay, that's pretty funny to be honest. And uh, Owen is still thinking. Owen preview is still thinking. Um, so this is here is my take. Uh, I'm going to do more tests, but for today, um, this is my take. I'm not going to just like blindly believe this benchmark. Okay. Having said that, if any model has even reached O1 Mini, I'm pretty sure it is going to be amazing for these kind of use cases. But to be honest, like to be transparent, I don't have enough use cases where I can test this model. I can go to one of these benchmarks, take a question and then test it. But I don't know how much of these questions have been exposed to these models. So I always take that with a pinch of salt. But on the other hand, with a very simple demo that we saw, we know for sure that O1 preview is a totally different level when you combine it with a deep seek model in this particular case. But it is also pretty funny, like with the model thinking process, like or whatever you call as thinking process is pretty interesting to be honest. I'm not sure how this is working. Is it like an agentic setup? Is it just like candidate responses? Because what I again feel is like two people talking to each other. One is challenging the other one. Either way, um, I'm happy that this model exists, uh, but this model has to go through series of tests to actually say that this is actual own preview level stuff. But otherwise, just from the benchmark, it looks good. But uh, is it everything? No, it's not everything. But I'm happy that this model exists. That to something that is called light. I'm definitely looking forward to play with this model more and then see how good we can leverage this model to advance or accelerate whatever we want to do with reasoning. Let me know what you feel if you have got any question that you would want me to test with this models. But otherwise, uh, one last time, uh, it's done. Okay, practice makes perfect. Is that? Oh. No, why, why are all these models hallucinating? Is it because of candidate response? I don't know, but I need to spend more time with the reasoning models. See you in another video. Happy prompting.